Uh, today I'm going to demonstrate a technique for removing mold from specimens. Uh, some of my insect drawers were exposed to some humidity and a few of them developed mold on the abdomens of these moths. It's pretty thick, you can see. It's like cotton on there. Uh, I moved last year and for a time some of my specimens were uh, boxes were stacked in a corner and it's kind of a humid part of the country in time of year so uh, some of them got this mold on them and it, it looks pretty bad but um, we can actually treat this I use acetone for this so I'm going to show you what I've developed for this. I have a jar of acetone here acetone is um, a solvent it's flammable and toxic so you want to be careful with it. Uh, I'm in a fairly large room it's pretty well ventilated so I'm not too worried about it right now. So um, first thing to do is I'll remove the label, the data label from the specimen and you can see even the data label has some mold on it and it's kind of discolored so I'm going to replace that. I'll make a new label for it. This is a specimen of Pachysphinx modesta. It's a sphingid moth. It's collected in Wyoming. Gillette, Wyoming. 2001. So, first thing I'll do is I grab the pin from the bottom and I just dip the specimen into the jar of acetone. I'll just let it float in there for a moment. The acetone will um, kill the mold, but there's still a fuzzy uh, mold on it, so I'll use a paintbrush here to sort of brush it off. Uh, these hummingbird moths are pretty robust and sturdy, and, and they can take some um, abrasion on them without too much damage, but more delicate moths and butterflies would be a bit more of a challenge. So I'm going to dip the brush in the acetone and gently, oh, I'm going to brace this with my fingers, and gently brush the abdomen. You can see the little pieces of white bits of mold flaking off. Uh, this is the same technique I use for degreasing uh, moths and butterflies and other insects that where the fat in the body has become uh, dissolved out into the tissues and stained it. You can see on the tip of this I've got some white mold on there. Now I'm going to flip the specimen over and do the back, the bottom side same way. Uh, around the legs here I'm just going to brush it very gently. I don't want to break anything off. And I can see the little bits coming off. I'm just going to stroke the antenna gently. And then the abdomen. Yeah, I can see the mold. It sort of rolls up like tissue paper as it comes loose. Okay, on the head. Now I will uh, stick this back in the acetone to sort of rinse off the uh, loose bits of mold. And I'll let it drip a little bit here, get some of the excess off. And then I'm going to... now. The acetone won't relax the wings, so the wings shouldn't um, move out of position. I'm just going to pin it now on the back of this so that it can dry. And we'll do another one. This is a big one. I'm going to put the label with that so I don't lose track of it. All right, this one is Pachysphinx occidentalis. This one's from Arizona. Yeah, this one's pretty moldy on the bottom as well as the top. 
also uh, I'll just do the same thing. This one's pretty wide, but I think it'll fit in here. Yeah. Let that soak for just a moment. And I'll reach in with my tweezers and get a hold of the pin. Gently get it out. Again, dip the brush in the acetone. Gently stroke it. Now, this is going to mat the hairs. Um, and once the specimen is dry, we can fluff them up a little bit. Uh, it's not ideal, but it's certainly better than tossing the specimen, which if you didn't treat it, um, would continue to grow mold fuzz on it and, and contaminate the other specimens in the collection. Okay. Now I'm going to flip it over and do the other side. I have done this before with specimens and I have not seen the mold return. So I'm pretty sure that the acetone actually kills the mold spores and filaments. Okay, now I'm going to rinse it off. I'm just going to plunk it in there and let it rinse. Swish it around a little bit. And then let it drip a little. And I'll go and pin it next to the other one. Now this label is actually in pretty good shape. It doesn't have mold growing on it. It's not discolored. But it's been exposed to the mold. So what I can do is I'll just grab it with the tweezers and just dip the label into the acetone in case there's any mold on it. It will sterilize the uh, the label. And this acetone is really volatile so it'll evaporate off really quickly. Here, I'll do one more. This one's really bad. Look, you can't even read the label. It's all just covered with mold. That's really bad. This one is Pax Sphinx Modesta from Minnesota. Can't even read the date on it. It's so bad. Look how bad this mold is on there. This is severe. The antennas, everything's covered with mold. So I'm going to plunk this in. Switch it around. Okay. And gently with the brush. Start on the head and we're going to work my way down. Wow, there's a lot. Ugh. It's a good lesson in paying attention to your collection. I've been, like as I say, I moved last winter and it's been, you know, a pretty crazy busy year and the pandemic and everything, it's been kind of up in the air and I, I could have caught this if I inspected it. Um, I know this wasn't uh, like this when I moved because I looked at all the boxes, I would have noticed it. So. Uh, nonetheless, it's better to catch it earlier than later. And I'm going to do the top. Do the antennas.
Okay. Now I'm going to rinse it off. Just swish it around in there a little bit. And get a hold of the pin. There we go. Just to rinse those sort of rolls of mold filaments off. There. I see the wingtip. A little bit of it has folded over. Okay. Shake it off. And I'm going to have to redo that label as well because that one's not really savable. Now I also have a couple of beetles. I have some mold on it. And I'm going to use this smaller jar. It would be much easier. I'm going to just put some acetone in this jar. I have a few here. Some of them just have a little bit just sort of a light dusting of mold and some of them are pretty heavily covered with it. This one's a good example. That's a, a dark beetle. It's almost black. You can see it's just like a white puff ball. I'll start with that one. Pull the label off. The label actually looks pretty good but it's kind of yellow. I'll probably put a new one on there just to freshen it up. It's still legible. Uh, this is a fungus beetle. <laughs> Ironically, you would find these on bracket fungi uh, attached to trees. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do first is just swish it around in the acetone. And beetles are pretty sturdy, so you can don't have to worry about the actual body. But you know the antennas and legs can break pretty easily, so you'd have to be a little gentle. And then I'll just brush this with the brush a little bit to remove the filaments. And again, I can see the little white, like uh, wet tissue paper coming off. I'll flip it over and do the other side. And then uh, one last swish around. Yeah, you can see it came out uh, really quite nice and clean. Okay, now I have a tiger beetle here, which is much more delicate. Long, thin legs, long antennas. If I go in there with a brush on that too hard, I'm going to mess it up. I'm going to break those legs off. It's really white. Look at that. So I'm just going to swish it around in there at first. I might go after the bottom a little bit, or just very, very gently with a brush. Yeah, I'm just going to very gently Oh yeah, I can see it coming off. Now I'm going to do the top. Even if there's still some filament stuck to it when I'm finished, at least I'll have killed it. Swished it around really good. Try and dislodge as much of that as possible. Yeah. That looks pretty good. And this label looks pretty good too. So I'm just going to dip that in acetone to 
just to sterilize it. I'll do one more beetle here. I've got a carabid beetle. This one just has kind of a light dusting of it. This is a Calisoma carabid beetle from Arizona. The label looks pretty good. It's from 2007. I might push this beetle down on the pin a little bit if I can. Yeah, just to get a little closer and then swish it around. And then gently brush the outside and go down on the legs a little bit too. This one's quite a bit sturdier. And even gently over the antenna. Okay, I'll flip it around. Do the bottom. Okay, this one's become quite loose on the pin, but I'll show you how to fix that. And I'll dip it, rinse it off. Okay. Yeah, it looks pretty good. All right. Now, it's only been about, I don't know, 10 minutes, and these moths that I had dipped are dry. And you can see they came out really, really well. There's no trace of the mold on them anymore. Um, the uh, It's still intact. And if you really wanted to, you could uh, take a brush, a dry brush, and just kind of fluff up the scales on the thorax and abdomen are a little matted. Sometimes if you just pat them gently, kind of knock loose the matting. Yeah. On the abdomen a little bit too. But it still looks much better, and you've saved the specimen. Yeah, it's nice and clean. This one, too. This one was really, really covered with it. I'm going to fix this matting here a little bit. Yeah, fluff it up just a little. You can't even tell. You can't even tell that that was moldy before. Now I notice this one's spinning on the pin a little bit. See this? And uh, there's a way to fix that too. I'm going to push the moth up towards the head of the pin. I'm going to get my glue. I use uh, water-based gel. and Put a little dot of glue on the pin just above where the body is, and then gently push that back onto the pin. Maybe uh, just smear that glue around the edge of it a little bit. And then when that dries, get it in the right position here. That'll hold the moth in place. This is the storage drawer that I took the moths out of that were moldy, and you can see the rest of them all look pretty good. I don't see any mold on any of these. Sometimes mold was on one right next to one. It didn't have any. Um, so after this, I took all of these moths out and put them in another box and then wiped out the inside of this drawer to get all the dust out. And then I sprayed it with um, a little bit of Lysol disinfectant, just lightly sort of misted it with disinfectant, which um, I can still smell a little bit of it which I hope will kill any other mold, residual mold spores that happen to be in there. Now I can put the ones that I've cleaned back in here. I have a teaching collection. This is just a storage collection for extra specimens. And um, I sort of 
like this technique of uh, arranging these sphinx moths like this, I can make best use of the space. I have a lot of specimens and can get kind of crowded in the boxes. Well, now I've got a uh, mothball pack in here that's paradichlorobenzene. And I don't typically use mothballs, but when I've had a pest problem or mold or, well, especially bugs, I'll put one of these in there for a couple of days. Um, it really is very effective at killing the bugs, but it's stinky. Uh, and I prefer to use Vapona, which is um, a little insecticide strip. Um, this one, you can see the date says 618. It's two years old. It needs to be replaced. And I, I suspect that maybe the mothballs might help reduce the mold, too. I, I don't really know about that, but it's always a good idea to keep your um, fumigants uh, replaced regularly and checked uh, to protect your investment in your collection.